All right, so we are, um, I'm going to talk to you about sclerology first today, but um, I wanted to show Dick um, what we've been doing. For example, um, we're, today we're going to analyze Dick's eyes as a, a case study, and there is Dick's right eye. And here is Dick's left eye. Now they look different because I, when I opened this one, I um, auto-corrected it. And I didn't do the other one, but I thought it was interesting to look at the difference maybe. Um, okay, so then uh, Dick, we and, and I'm going to um, send you this Dick with these eyes on it. This is Holly, who's in the class. Wow, stress setting. What? I said stress city. Oh, darn. Holly, stress? No. No, I'm not. Not now. I used to be. Well, you were then. <laughs> <laughs> either, either that or you didn't like the cameraman. She's gotten didn't like the what? The person that was taking your photo. Oh, uh, it was my husband. Don't tell him that. Uh-oh. Uh well, remember <laughs> this, that... That's the, that's the end of my analysis. I think the way Dick is saying it is, is that people with very close neurogenic iris fibers, as you know, they're called neuro because it means nerves. Right. And uh, so they have a tendency um, in life to have more problems with the nervous system. And sometimes that includes how, um, uh, handling stressful situations. That, yeah, that could totally, that's 100% me. I don't handle things well, I don't think, as other people do. Yeah, as some other people, remember. We all have our issues. Now, this is the only picture that we got of Marisol's, unfortunately, because it's not a great picture. But uh, Marisol is a um, uh, practicing uh, health food store owner, and Dick, she's a Nature Sunshine distributor. And um, she's going to be what is on. her name? Oh, Mar Marisol. Yeah, Marisol. She's going to be here in a little that's while. A, that's her first name? Yeah, and she's trying to get us a better photograph um, of her eyes. And uh, Fabiana. Well, that looks like, a, looks like it was taken with a handheld. Yeah, well, it, yeah, it was a handheld and it was put on. Now, did you know that Holly's picture? was this picture was taken, wait, whoop, let me go back to Holly. Her picture was taken with her cell phone. Now look how good they've gotten. That's, I've seen some surprisingly good photos uh, taken with cell phones. Yeah. There's some really good apps out there. My camera phone is horrible, but the app that I have is really good. What was the name of it, Holly? I think I wrote it down. I think it's called Camera Awesome, but it just says camera with an exclamation point afterwards. Okay, so Camera Awesome. awesome. I'm going to write that down before in my notebook for the class. That's the only one I could find. I had some teenagers that were tech savvy helping me find one, but that was the only one I could find. Okay, Camera Awesome. I like that. Um, okay, so... I think it, it does really enhance the photographs for sure. I mean, especially the sclera shows up just fabulous with that camera. So yeah, the, all, all the eyes I shoot, it seems like the sclera shows up great. So Dick, today we will talk about your eye pictures because we've talked about the other class members. But um, well, I will send you these photographs in case you want to use them for your case Thank study. You. Okay. All right. So now we are going to look at some sclerology today. Now, you know, when I started in iridology, I really just had no interest in becoming a sclerologist. I thought the sclera was ugly, and I thought it didn't make any sense. How could that possibly be significant? But I have come to know that I can't really do iridology without using sclerology. I just they're just like two peas in a pod. It's just like taking your iris out of your eyeball and saying, oh, this is all that matters. Um, so with IPA, with the exam, you are not required 
to know sclerology. So this is not a sclerology course. But the basics that IPA uh, requires one to understand before they take their exam is what I'm going to be showing you today. So it's the study of the white of the eyes. It is separate from our audiology and more extensive than here. The sclera is the tough outer coating of the eye. And you remember that we looked at anatomy pictures earlier on. And it maintains the eyeball shape. And it's really important in that it is um, can reveal things that are acute and things that are chronic. And so many sclera signs can leave the sclera, but some are going to appear chronic and they're going to stay. But we do see changes. I have had a number of clients with sclera changes that I've been able to document uh, with a photograph um, to say, look, this, you know, this mark only goes half as far as it used to toward the iris, or this mark is now in a circle when it used to be just in a hook. So, and so lifestyle changes show up more readily or more obviously in the sclera than they do in the iris. Because, you know, in the iris, as we've discussed, once we acquire something, it's just nigh on to impossible to get rid of it. The sclera is cumulative, um, not dispersive. So it accumulates things but it doesn't get rid of very many things. Now, I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm hoping it's happening, but I think people are going to have to live in a cleaner world um, sometimes than they're willing to, to live in, or even able to in this world. So you're saying uh, when you do sclerology, uh, you might be analyzing something that no longer uh, is an issue. You, well, no, I did it, that's not what I said, but that's, um, that's a good question. What I said was, is that in the sclera, you have chronic signs, and you also have, let me go over here and do this, let me see here, see if I can do this. All right, so, you have the chronic signs, so let's just say, this is the sclera, and this is the iris. Okay, so here's the iris right here. Okay, whoop, this person has a green eye. I'm not very good with, I don't have a mouth, so. And so let's just say that you have, I need a red line. Let me just go back to the pen. Let's see, let me use the pen. It's not going to be a good color, but anyway. So let's just say that you have a sclera sign, and it comes like this. And I wish it were red and it goes to the aorta. Okay, so if you were uh, doing a program and if you had just really worked hard on cardiovascular health, uh, cholesterol, etc., then you might find that it goes away or it backs off or it gets smaller. But let's just say that you inherited this sign, and no matter what you do, that's not going to go away. Mm -hmm. There's another sign that is called a surgery sign, and it's very bold, very thick. And, you know, uh, you see it when people have had surgery, and it might be like that. Those surgery lines don't go away either. They're kind of like a trauma to the physical body. So there are some signs that no matter what you do, they won't go away. But like, for example, I had a girl that had breast cancer, and she had like a loop-de-loop -loop in the breast area that uh, indicated some tumor-type issues or cyst or growth. And as we worked, and she did a ton of work, that circle opened up and then retreated. So that was really fun to see. So anyway, stress. Okay. I'm, I'm still left with the question. Um, that let's use that circle as an example, and you're saying that's unlikely to retreat uh, or diminish. 
So, but whatever the issue was physically might have been corrected and might no longer be in the body. No, no, because Dick, it's genetic. It's a genetic marker. And so it oh. means that if you get off your program, you're still going to have a problem. That's the way I understand it. Even right, if you're so well... Are you saying it's, it's only genetic? Let me see if I get this right. Uh, genetic markers are going to stay there. I get that. Yeah. Uh, but if it's not genetic and it does show up in the sclera and you do correct the condition, it's going to go away. That's it. You is, can't... Is that a yes? Yes. Oh, okay. I, I misunderstood. And, and I, uh, on the previous slide, uh, this sounds like a stupid question, but I just want to make sure I understand. Do you use, use pupil and eyeball synonymously? I know you've used it both ways. You mean exactly the same thing? Oh, did I say pupil and eyeballs? You said eyeball last time in, in, in writing, and then you said pupil previously, and I was going to ask about pupil tonus, whether that's still a valid term or not. That's oh, yes. Yeah, and, and in the book, there's a whole chapter on pupil tonus. Okay. Yeah, and also... So, I, eyeball and pupil, same thing in, in your mind. Yes. Okay. Eyeball and iris. So your eyeball is your iris. Your pupil is your pupil, and that's all. Okay, go. Hey, Marisol. Hi, Betty. How are you? I'm good. I want to introduce you to uh, Richard S. Williams, who's on with us today. He was to start Hello, the... Richard. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I just said hello, sorry. So, Dick, this is Marisol that just came on. Greetings. All right, here we go. So, in sclerology, the red lines can disappear, they can retreat, but sometimes if you're working really hard and it never retreats, then we might say, well, you know, that problem came down through my family. I'm not going to have it. I'm not going to manifest it but the line is there, so I'm going to take care of my uh, aorta. So, oh, wait, i got to get rid of this. Hold on. Okay, wait, go away, pencil. There, non-drawing mode. This is another sclerology chart. Um, Y'all may have seen this. This is uh, One Eye by Leonard Milmauer. And um, he is a major uh, sclerologist. Um, and I think he lives in California now, I believe. I can't remember. But um, he's written several books on sclerology. And he does teach uh, classes um, on sclerology. He, he also teaches iridology as well. But anyway, this is a much prettier, more colorful uh, chart that's related sort of to organ and gland placement. So remember, we're not looking at the iris today. We are looking at the sclera. So there's the iris. You see the uh, collarette? And there's the iris. And then going out from there, there is the heart, the liver, etc. And you'll see there are some different um, points in this chart. But in general, sclerology charts agree with one another, kind of like iridology. Sclerology is a much um, a newer on the scene uh, practice. Iridology has been popular in this country for 100 years or been being used and longer. But sclerology um, was brought into popularity by Doc Wilwright, who worked with the American Indians a lot. And he couldn't figure out how they were diagnosing, and he found out that they were using sclerology. And it's very ancient. We know the Chinese used it. Uh, we see it in different types of drawings from ancient Egyptians, etc. So people have been studying the sclera for a long, long time. Dick, do you use sclerology? Not a lot. Not a lot. It wasn't until, well, I, I'm just not confident in it. Uh, and, and I really, 
I felt that it, like you, that it uh, more or less reinforced iridology. But it wasn't until I looked at the illustration on the back of your book, and I saw that uh, indication about the thyroid uh, being an issue, and when you cleaned up the thyroid, and which you saw through sclerology, uh, that the tumor, and I believe it was a breast cancer in the right eye that showed that, and I realized that I would not have seen that. I would not have found that, and that really got my attention. So I'm intensely interested in learning sclerology. So, so I do teach a separate sclerology class, but I like sclerology because it's like a pointer, like an arrow. Sometimes it just kind of gets our attention, and it causes us as iridologists to look more closely. So um, that's, that's kind of what that's all about. Now, the sclera signs are also called conjunctive signs, and we're only, like I said, going to look at a few, and these are the ones we're going to look at today. So I'm going to show you some pictures of them. An indicator is like a pointer. And so just like the, uh, when you look at the pupil section, you'll see that uh, the pupil reflexes out the, the color, inside the color red in the nutritive zone. It reflexes out to whatever organ or tissue is out there. Well, on this other side, like pointers coming from the back of the eye, from the optic nerve, we get these red lines that are pointing to us. So, you know, if, if this were a left eye, I would see these pointers going toward the spleen, for example, and uh, maybe the arm and hand, and it would cause me to go look at the iris and see if in that part of the iris there is something that I didn't see, like inflammation, like raised white fibers, for example. Or maybe there's a lacuna there that's dark, or maybe there's a black pigment there. So then we would know to look more deeply or, you know, to go to our brain and say, hey, we really better take a look at that. That is terribly interesting. And maybe there's something. And ask the person, oh, have, have you had any immune system problems? And, you know, um. Mm -hmm. On that pointer on the top, you have two pointers there. The one on top, I noticed, is curved a little bit at the end. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you differentiate that between the indicator on the bottom? Well, there's a, a little controversy about that, but yes and no. Um, Jack Tips says that there is a healing hook that forms in the sclera, and that is something that um, Dr. Wilwright used to teach also. And so I, if I saw that, I would say the most important thing is, is that one is a very thin line, and that's going to be a very mild stressor, and the other one is very thick and engorged, so that's going to be a greater stressor. Now, there is a theory that hasn't been proven that if this goes ahead and next time you see that person, maybe in two months, this has turned into more of a hook, like it's curved back around like a hook, then it might be the line retreating, but it also might be a, um, a tumor marker forming. So like I said, you have to watch what's going on, so you have to get the person to come back and let us look at that and see if any changes occur. You know, just kind of keep an eye on it. See if it's, it's retreating or if it's forming into something that the body is walling off. They call it a capsule in sclerology. But if the body's forming a capsule, you know, that it may be a cancer where the body is trying to wall it off from the rest of the body or pull it away from the organs. And so that would look like a little capsule. But we're not really going to get into that in this little bit that IPA wants us to know. But that's a good question. Now, here is just a pointer. And, you know, you'll notice that sometimes, like a pointer like this, is pointing. 
and you look over here at the eye and you go, well, gosh, this person's got lots of lacuna, but, you know, gosh, there's a huge lacuna here. And, you know, this is not a, uh-oh, sorry. Oh, previous, there we go. This is nothing uh, real major looking where this is going right here. But it, if you, I'm not good at using this pad, but one of the things we look at is the red line is closer to the outer rim, the more imminent the problem is. So this is in the lung area, and you'll notice that the, are pointing to the lung area, and you'll notice that these lymph nodes are quite engorged and these have actually moved together and so we're seeing a stress line a simple stress line but it's in the area of the lung and the breast so you know it'd be a good thing to ask a person if they have any breast issues any breast cancer you know do they smoke you know but something in that mid chest area needs to be examined and um, to see maybe if you can figure out if there's something going on currently or something that has gone on. Here's another interesting mark over here. It's not that mark, but this is that capsule I was telling you about. You see that? It just looks like a little tadpole almost. And again, that mark is not really in something that calls your attention to the iris. So this is mainly how I use sclerology in my office. Mainly I look for indicator lines like this one that are heavy, that are pointing to something. And then I also look for things, why is the body walling something off? And, you know, if you look closely at this person, they have a scurf rim. Um, they also have uh, yellowing out here in all of the um, hydrogenous lymphatic tissues, better known as the um, lymphatic rosary. And um, so if you have in, in uh, some iridology charts, for example, you've got two breast signs over here or two lung signs over here. So this might be heading in that direction. So it will be worth analyzing. What does it mean when we have yellow in the iris? Anybody remember? Pancreas or no, kidneys. Kidneys, that's right. And so the yellow in a blue eye can often refer to uric acid, that that person makes more uric acid than other people do. And uh, so what environment does cancer like to grow in? It likes to grow in an acidic environment. So we might just be looking at this and go, well, we want to ask the question. We do not want to scare the person and indicate that there is something terribly wrong because, in general, her scleras look pretty good. It's just these two things, and they happen to be kind of pointing to the same area between uh, 3 and 4 o'clock on both irises. So that's it. It's an attention getter. Get your attention. And I don't worry a lot about little tiny lines unless um, they're, like here, there's a lot to the head area. So I would definitely ask, you know, um, do you have headaches or tension headaches or anything like that? So you're saying essentially all of those lines, those minor lines, are not important? I don't deal with them. Now, if you were doing a sclerology reading alone, then I would say you want to get a really good shot of the sclera and really look at where everything is ending up and, you know, draw a good map of it. Um, but for an iridologist who's learning iridology, I say just use them to point in the direction of what you might need to take a closer look at. Okay, um, we don't forget about them, but they're not as significant. Um, okay. This is an interesting um, 
interesting picture right here. Um, these are in, this is a simple stress line or an indicator line right here. And this is also one. And it goes up, but right about here where you see this line going across is where the adrenals are. And um, so uh, when you look at the map, I'm going to go back to the map so you can see it real quick. It's always awkward to, um, I wanted the picture to be big, so go back. Okay, so we'll go here. And um, I, I really don't like this map. I always get, okay, here we go. Yeah, see, in his map, the adrenals are down there, but if you look at um, Leonard's, where did the adrenals go? Hold on, they're missing. They should be right here. Oh, right here. Okay, they're right there. So um, it's the line is coming up. And it's making a, like a little stick out in the adrenal kidney area. And that's not a very professional term for it, but it's a little fork. So if you look back at this one, you see how it's got, the, anytime you see a fork, they tend to call it a trauma fork. And it's an indication of a, an area that's being a little more stressed than just a simple stress line. And we're going to look at a trauma fork here, right here. So when you see a, a, a major trauma fork, the two branches are more often of equal size and length, and they point to a sector where there could be some kind of a trauma or problem with the organ or gland. And if you look right here, here's a simple stress line, but it forks out in two directions. But the area of the iris that we look at is the area that's straight across from the line, where the indicator line was going. Why it branches out, nobody really knows, but it's like it's encompassing an area. Um, and so you look at where the line is, not where the fork is necessarily. So the line forks out here. Are you saying the forks really have no meaning as far as we know? Um, they have a meaning because the closer they are to the iris, just like other lines, the more significant they are. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you'll see a very small fork. Like I'll show you one. Um, like this is an interesting fork. You see how this congestion line has come out. Then it becomes an engorged line, um, it's got more trauma or deeper uh, trauma here, and yet you'll see that the fork is kind of getting close to the iris and then kind of moving along. Well, when the fork, as the fork gets bigger and bigger, it covers more uh, space, and it is, um, what's the best way to say that? Hold on just a minute. Um, Oh, if it, if it crosses uh, a quadrant, you know, if we divide the iris up into four quadrants, like 12 to 6 and uh, 9 to 3, uh, or, and, yeah, um, then what we're seeing is, is that this line is beginning to go from the lower quadrant to the upper quadrant. And in a later class, you could get into, well, gosh, if it just keeps going, then it's in the uh, canthus uh, area near the nasal point. So if it, um, hold on just a minute. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, sorry. Um, it, it would mean an indication of endocrine system problems. If you have a line that crosses quadrants out here, which I'm sure we'll see one, 
it could be an indication of lymphatic issues in addition to you know signs in the lymphatic area as well anybody else have any questions on that one not right now uh, I don't uh, no that's clear I'm, I'm so I'm still somewhat confused by the previous eye in that there were just lines everywhere. There were minor, so I understand we're not supposed to focus on them. But just in theory, my brain, my mind is thinking they're pointing at everything. Yeah, now, if we were, Dick, if we were taking a sclerology class, we would go into a lot more detail about where those are and what it might mean and how it correlates to the iris. But this is just one 45 minutes on the okay. major sclerology signs, you know, so. I lost, I lost track of that, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't want you to get, yeah, disturbed by it or anything. Um, and so that's what I say. Sometimes the sclera can reveal a lot because um, it looks to me like this is traveling up to this area that seems raised and inflamed. So you can kind of get some clues from, you know, where the sclera signs are. Here's a trauma fork. Um, on the side, you can see that this is on the nasal side or the medial side. We call it both nasal and medial. And we've got two forks here. This one, this smaller fork, and then a big fork that has a uh, congestion signs around it. And then uh, at the end of the class, I have a slide about these fermentation signs. Um, a lot of people have these fermentation signs in their sclera, and um, it relates to um, the process. Usually it's in the gut, but it might be in the sinuses, for example, depending on where they show up. But I often, uh, when I see those signs, I automatically go after the yeast problems and the fungus problems because that's a sign that there's too much sugar floating around in the body. And so that's that blue sign up there. And I'll show you that again in just a few minutes. So you see the trauma fork can be very big and the fork can be small. And, uh, but where the fork points to, like in this case, the thyroid. It's uh, you lost me when you said there's an indicator that there's too much sugar in the body. Up I, here? I, I did, how did you come to that conclusion that that's what that means? See this gray line up here? Yeah. That's a fermentation sign. And down here, there's another one. It's smaller. And different people have said different things about it. But anecdotally, I can say that I've noticed in my clients and in myself that that, you know, we used to say all the gray signs in the iris were probably heavy metals. They're, I mean, in the sclera were probably heavy metals. Well, you know that yeast love metals. So there's a very good chance that it's a combination of both, you know, fermentation meaning um, gas churning up in the whole body in the, uh, or wherever it's showing up. And so this is when it's important to go after the yeast problem when you see that gray sign up there. And I'll show you another so one of those in a minute. Is the indicator uh, that you're referring to, is it because it's round or because it's round and gray or just gray? Or no, because it's gray, it? gray to blue. It's always gray to blue. Okay. And it's at the end of a point. Yeah, gray to blue and at the end of a point. At the end of a point. Okay, yeah. got it. And I'll show you another one later. Now, um, Tony Miller called this a meandering vessel. And it's just kind of meandering along. But its indicators are weaknesses within the veins and problems with circulation. You, it could be uh, varicose veins, some kind of weakness in connective tissue, like even in the, in the bowel, for example, uh, hemorrhoids, vascular spasms, 
And the truth is that these can show up anywhere in the eye and indicate a weakness with the veins or some circulatory problem. So if you see a meandering vessel, then you immediately think, okay, this is congestion in the veins and arteries and problems with circulation. So I'll show you an example of that. Um, here's a meandering vessel over here. It's not quite as dramatic as the picture that we saw, but you'll notice, and of course, you know, Dr. Jensen used to call an iris like this, what, Dick, a murky? Was it a murky eye? Well, yeah. Um, thank you, Mary. I kind of um, forgot. Uh, he, he used other terminology as well, um, along with pathological polychromia, uh, like you're mentioning the, the uh, ureic yellow. This, could be indicators of the liver as well. We would call that a spastic colon. And, and the, the overlay could be, I just lost my picture. Uh -oh. um, Arcus Yeah, I'm having a really difficult time letting go of those terms as you get the new ones. And I'm ex intellectually uh, it's totally exciting. <laughs> Just the old terms keep coming back in. I know. Well, listen, I had years of struggling with that. And, you know, when I'm with my client, Dick, the main thing that I want to do is I don't want them to hear the word senilis because they immediately yes. think the worst. And, you know, I don't like pathological because that means disease. And so it's okay to think in those terms. He didn't like it either. Uh, somehow that got attached to him. Uh, I know in classes I used him several times. He called them drug spots or SORA. Uh, and I said, uh, what about the term pathological polychromia? And he would always defer. He, he would never confront that. Oh, okay. Well, maybe because well, in, he in, stand in the classes that I was in, he did not. Yeah. Yeah, Dick studied directly with Dr. Jensen, so he has firsthand knowledge. I mean, I took a class with him, but I didn't do as much as Dick was able to do. Um, and so, y'all, what you're learning is the new terminology, and those of us that were in our odology for many years have had to unlearn uh, older terms. And this is in the book, like the differences in the old and the new. And there's not a lot of difference, really. If you just look at that chart in the textbook that describes the yeah, difference in the, American and Europe. One of the problems uh, also is that uh, on some song in our biology works. And that's for a lot of people are reluctant to let go of it because of that or to accept a new challenge. Uh, well, I want to learn listen uh, to this. standards. Dick, here at, at Ann Wigmore Institute in Puerto Rico, I'm going to teach an iridology class here next year, and we're going to offer living foods and iridology so people get, you know, two different classes. And it'll be like an iridology retreat. Well, the reason they don't have an iridologist here anymore is that the iridologist found so many things wrong with people that they didn't have a good experience on their retreat. Yeah. And so that's what we have to be careful of, you know, is finding the Absolutely. Gear. Yeah. Like I would look at this eye, and the first thing I would say is, oh, my goodness, your eye is like a flower. And then they're going to say, oh, but what about all those red lines, you know? They look terrible. That, that sounds like Betty Johnson. <laughs> yeah. I have the jewels and flowers, you know, and I was calling them toxic lesions. And <laughs> It's a totally different approach. Yes, well, um, there was a, a webinar last week by Christoph, and he did Rayed in relation to his family. And he talked about jewels, like you see here, there's a jewel, there's a jewel. And he talked about flowers, and then the term shakers, and he said, I'd much rather be called a flower, you know, than someone that had lesions, you know. so. That's it. It's like in today's world, people are very stressed, and we want to leave. They, they need to leave our office empowered 
And I know you do that, Dick. You have a way of doing it with, with, with who you're working with. But it's like people that are just starting out, you look, it's so overwhelming. Like even this picture, it's very overwhelming. So, it is very overwhelming. Take it from me. <laughs> yes. But you're doing great, Holly. You're doing well, great. Well, thanks, Betty. To, to uh, who, speak to what you were speaking right? to yesterday right? when I did, can you hear me? Yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. I was speaking. Go, please go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Um, just to what your point was, yesterday when I was doing the case study with this, this lady who's about my age, she was so happy when I left that I called her eye star-shaped. Oh. And she just keeps talking about it. She will not stop talking. Oh. It's all she talks about is that I told her she had star-shaped eyes. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. <laughs> I, it is. I have to, you know, that's, you show such empathy. And I have to learn to do that. I've just been very dynamic about it. Well, you know what? <laughs> they walk out of my office and they wonder how long they've got to live. Exactly. Now, we don't want that we anymore. We don't want to do that to people. Yeah, we don't want that anymore. And our goal is, as professional iridologists, is not just to sell herbs, but really to give the person confidence to go forward and know that the things they're going to do are going to improve their health and we're giving them a baseline you know this is what you need to work with but there are so many options now so many good ways to get good food in your body and so many good ways you know to to use herbal medicine or teas or whatever you want to use now here's you know, a but what, what, what I, I don't mean to be taken out of the class very soon I just want to say one more thing go ahead uh, I, and, uh, on an emotional level uh, I've had several uh, situations where, I mean, I knew that th these plants either had bowel cancer or were going to have it, and I, I, I told them this is what it looks like, and because I was fearful that they were going to lose their their lives, and and gave them a program hopefully to deal with that. And, and, and I would say 95, 96% of the people like that were receptive, but there were two of them I remember very well that had absolutely one got very angry and was going to complain uh, because I accurately, and I don't use the word, I never did use the word diagnose, but accurately analyzed the situation. He died from bowel cancer less than a year later. Wow. Wouldn't think about detoxing. And then yeah. there's another one that was going to complain to the authorities. And I, I know she didn't have long to go. Uh, they just didn't want to hear it. Yeah. Well, and sometimes when you see that and you see there's so much congestion and you see that there are a lot of things pointing in a, a direction that doesn't look good, sometimes it is better to try to be honest with the person. But my idea is is that, you know, there I don't, I don't know that you have anything wrong with you, but I'm looking at your eyes and I'm seeing that you need to make some major, major lifestyle changes for what's in store, and I can help you do that if you want me to. But, you know, then you might want to go to a medical doctor and get, a, you know, a full checkup and get diagnosed and, you know, just see if what I'm seeing is meaningful. So we don't want to just let them go and think, oh, we don't need to do anything either. So when you see somebody and you're you're concerned, um, it's good to be honest with them. But again, we're not doctors; we can't diagnose. So now this is just another um, you know congestion line. Remember, it always means circulation issues. And if you'll remember in the iris that the scurf rim actually sits over; it's on the skin. But then right under that is also the circulation and the limb. So, you know, if I saw this, I would have the person, you know, jumping on a trampoline, walking in fresh air, skin brushing, you know, doing lots of things that would increase the lymphatic drainage and the cleansing. And, you know, we could analyze this eye further, but, I mean, there, there are crypts in the bowel. You see all those, everybody? So we got lots I, of them. I see by uh, page 13 in your book. 
you still uh, do use the word scurfrum as a subtype by color. Yes. yes, it is. So that's still good. Okay. Yeah, that's still good. And I'm not crazy about the term, but uh, sometimes I'll just say to somebody that, you know, this ring around here is just like the skin meets the outer world, the outer edge of the eye represents the sclera, I mean the, the skin where it meets the sclera. And, you know, so um, this rim is an indication that you're not getting rid of sweat, you're not getting rid of toxins, and you have to stimulate that process. You know, just language, just working with the language. Now, we saw this in one of the first pictures, but uh, vessel pools, they look like a pool of blood within a vessel, which is causing it to bulge out. Um, and it can indicate stagnation. Smaller ones look like a little string of pearls, like little dot, dot, dots, and they're called micro pools but they indicate that the structural integrity of the blood vessels could be defective. There could be a danger of a hemorrhage or an aneurysm, or it could be someone that's already had a hemorrhage or an aneurysm. So again, I always go back to genetics. If I see a vessel pool, then I might say, does circulatory problems run in your family? And uh, if they say no, and I say, you know, what, what illnesses did your parents have? Uh, any strokes or heart attacks, for example? And uh, not that you have to have that, but is it in your background? And you kind of lead into that. Don't say, of course, right off that you have an aneurysm forming, because we really don't know that. We're just looking at signposts. You know, just like when a green leaf comes out on a tree, oh, spring's coming, you know. It's a signpost. And if the person can do some of the things that would be supportive, then that need not ever occur, that thing that could be problematic. So, you know, we really want to get people um, to help themselves and to learn how to help themselves, too. Now, here's a couple. I don't have a great picture of this, but you can kind of see that there's a bulge right here and there's another bulge right here. Those are vessel pools where they're much thicker than the other signs that are in the sclera. And there's several in this person. Now, this is a dark brown eye, and I really couldn't lighten it up much more than this. But you can plainly see that there is a blue ring around here, which could indicate venous insufficiency or heart insufficiency. There are also some of the contraction furrows, and um, so there is a, a tightness in the nervous system and certainly might be an indicator that the person has a lot of stress, they're not getting enough exercise based on the blue line, or they're not getting enough oxygen. I mean, it sometimes is a matter of getting enough oxygen into their body, and they might need to have more chlorophyll-rich foods foods that are uh, high in chlorophyll and uh, foods that are going to help the body create, um, you know, more oxygen uh, to the cell cellular level because, you know, when you're acidic, you get anaerobic things growing in the body, which is what cancer, they can thrive in an anaerobic and mold can thrive in an anaerobic act, uh, area. So anyway, so this is a sign. That's a vessel pool. Here are a couple uh, more. Word for venous congestion. For what? Is there a replacement word for what Dr. Jensen called venous congestion? I just use venous congestion, but honestly, um, IPA doesn't talk a lot about it, but we still call it venous congestion. Thank you. Everybody that I know does. That's a pretty picture. Now, remember earlier I was showing you that a vessel might run along the iris and keep going up or keep going to side to side? Like, for example, this particular tangential vessel might go from the thyroid to the adrenals. 
The adrenals are at the bottom of the eye, and the thyroid is at uh, three, uh, 9 o'clock in the left eye, or 3 o'clock. So a tangential means it goes from along the iris rather than pointing. And it tells us we want to pay attention to organs or tissues in the adjacent iris sector. Sometimes these tangential, I never can say that word, vessels, um, like here's one right here. It goes from, if you took a full sclera picture, you would see that it goes from way up to the back of the eye and it comes down and it goes all the way down. Well, this is crossing the quadrants. It's in the outer quadrant. Anybody remember what I said that was when it goes along the outer? When it's that big, it means lymphatic congestion. So in addition to what we already know about lymphatic congestion, when you see one of these, and it, it, we're going to look at two things, but one is, is that the lymph, again, is out here where the skin and the circulation are. It's very dark in this region. We also okay. see... Yeah, Dan? I'm lost. I'm, okay. I'm well aware that if an eye is that dark, there's going to be lymphatic congestion, even if you can't see it. And you can see it in the iris itself. But I'm, I'm at a loss as to why this wandering line starting at the top of the eye and, and paralleling it, going all the way around. I, I have, does that indicate uh, uh, the congestion? Um, it does. If it's on the outside, so notice this. Uh -huh. This is the nasal point over here. So this is a right eye. You go over here, and we've got any line that goes from the top to the bottom. Right. It indicates lymphatic drainage if it's on the outside of the eye, on the temple side of the eye. So You're saying a, a line that runs the length of, of the eye definitely means lymphatic. Yes, if it goes from top to bottom. Okay. Lymphatic. I see. Okay. Yeah. Now, in addition, you know, it said look at the adjacent iris area. So you'll notice it's much darker right here, and it kind of branches off. What's right okay. across from that? What's at, what's at um, 9 o'clock in a right eye? Well, lung and bronchioles, for one Yes, thing. lung and bronchioles. So we want and, to look at heart. That. Yeah, exactly. Lung, bronchioles, heart, it's all right there. And um, Holly, you were asking the other day about the gray inner iris border. You see, this is one that's just totally dark and gray looking, and we have a whole lot of inflammation. Yeah, I'm still having a hard time with that. Yeah, it's something that, you know, the main thing is, is darkness within the collarette is an indicator of poor uh, digestion and, sim and assimilation. When it's dark, you know, you have plaque buildup in the colon. The, uh, the, the body isn't able to uh, break down. We don't have the right enzymes. We don't have the right pH in the stomach and the pancreas. And um, You'll learn a lot more about that process in the anatomy and physiology class. But, yeah, I keep saying that I wish I would have taken that first. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. But yeah, you no, know what? Fine. It'll still, it'll still, like I said, when we, you and I were talking about that one day, um, it'll all kind of click, though, when you, you know, you think about the way the iris is formed. Because here's the head, you know, there's your brain areas, there are your legs. I mean, it, it is made up in many ways. Here are your uh, glands and your organs right out here. So it is kind of, when you think about the center of the body being the pupil, I like to tell people the pupil, just pretend that it's the mouth. And everything that goes down this tube, everything that it touches in this tube, is within the collarette. Okay. And it's a uh, skin, just like on the inside of our mouth, and it goes all the way through, through the duodenum, through the small intestines, into the large intestines, and into the anus. And so... 
anything that you see in here that looks problematic or different from the other iris fibers or darker or black is, you know, going to be a, a, a digestive indicator. So let me ask you this then. Earlier today when I was looking at my father-in-law's eyes and I saw he had a, um, it looks to me like in both eyes he has lacuna in his prostate area. Uh huh. But his but his collarette is also darker than the rest of his eye. Would that be connected then? Yes, because what is down by the prostate, the the lower bowel? Right. You know, it's so um, the prostate can just like the uterus can totally be related to our toxicity level in our body. Everything can be. Oh, but yeah, when you see those see yeah, you see those two things, it would be worth mentioning uh, mentioning those two signs. Okay. And 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 possibly linking them together as well. Okay. Because auto intoxication is a huge okay. problem and most of us don't even know we have it. Mm-hmm. That's why iridologists, and Dick will remember this, but we used to have such a bad name because all we wanted to do was cleanse the colon. But, you know, what it goes back to is, you know, energy in. You know, our diet needs to supply living enzymes to us, and we cook our food to death, and we process it to death, and our poor bodies are suffering because of it, even if we're eating a good American diet, you know, right. still, if we're not digesting, we're not absorbing. So it's not even what you eat, it's what you can digest. Oh, I got to get rid of this little thing. Sorry, I'm not, not as good at this as a lot of people are, this drawing thing. Okay, now um, this is one of those um, signs. You see how it's fading out here? Sometimes you'll see these signs are starting to fade, and yet this is still a tangential vessel in that it goes along the iris. It's not pointing at the iris at all it's going along it. And you see down here this hook? That's something to watch. Whether that's the beginning or the end of the line. We don't know unless we've been with that person for a while. So, uh -huh. you know, we have to find out, Dick, have they been doing a program? Have they been taking herbs and herb teas and exercising and really working on themselves? Because if so, this could be a healing line showing the work you've done. But if you're toxic and you drink copious amounts of alcohol and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, then it might be forming into something. So we don't know whether it's coming or going. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, I could see at the end that as, as it fades, uh, yeah. that could indicate healing. It could. That's what I'm. That's what I would. Yeah. I would suggest to the person that they even do more than they've been doing, so that we can get this to totally go away. But that's a positive thing we can say from spirology. Well, it looks like you have a healing line here. Um, it so happens this person had done a lot of work on herself, and she had done a lot of colonics and really worked on her bowel, and you notice this is coming out of that bowel area, and um, it, you know, goes across a tangential vessel, and uh, so it may be that there was some constriction in the vascular system, um, uh, in the bowel itself, and it's maybe starting to release. Again, it's not a definite, it's not 100%. Yeah, and in conjunction with what you just said, and I know we're not doing iridology, but I noticed that the transverse colon is sitting on the, on the bladder in the uterus. Yes. And that probably is causing her some elimination problems. Yeah, exactly. And uh, what he's talking about, Holly, is up here, too, this prolapsus. 
which is causing more pressure down here as well. Now, I'll tell you all this, this is not part of what IPA requires, but Jack Tip says that when the line goes out and it goes back in, that this is an infection pocket. So yeah. it's an indicator of some infection. And if you look down here, you'll see that there is a big uh, closed lacuna and it looks like even an open lacuna after that. So there may be some sort of an infection um, in that area. So are, are you saying, um, I keep saying, are you saying, do you think that every um, scleric sign uh, has its uh, equivalent in, in the iris itself, in the, yeah, in the, in the iris, in the I, pupil? I don't. Not the, excuse me, not the pupil, the iris. Yeah, I really don't because I know that scleras can show a more acquired issues in the body, like reflecting surgeries and things that you've gone through. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes the sclera lines will point, let's just say that the, the there's a sclera line uh, down here and it's pointing directly to where this pigment is. So it's like definitely pointing, oh, the iris has this sign and the sclera has this sign and, you know, wow, that looks like there's something, you know, major going on there. And One of the um, things that surprises me about that eye with all those stress lines is the size of the pupil. All those what? Oh. I, I would expect with that many stress rings and they're white. Uh, that the pupil would be constricted, but it isn't. It usually is. Yeah. Well, it could be lighting. You know, with photographs, you just don't ever know. It could be they took the picture right when the person walked in the room. Mm. So that's something we can't really judge, you know, from this. Um, but, you know, oftentimes the iris, it, the signs are showing up in both. Okay, now a spindle is a widening of a vessel showing vascular atony. This vessel is not able to contract or dilate as it should to push blood through. According to Angra, there could be some liver damage. So now what this is showing is, is that this is called a spindle, and most of the signs that IPA uses have to do with circulation and blood vessels. There is a lot more to it, a lot more signs. But the uh, vessel can't contract, uh, can't uh, dilate or contract because it's lost tone in the vessel and uh, possible sign of liver issues. I don't have a good picture of this, but uh, this is one where it looks like it's kind of twisted at a point and it's more dilated at a point. So a spindle. Um, this is kind of a twisted uh, spindle right here. Um, I don't really use the spindle very much. I just look at it and go, um, you know, well, this does have a, a shows congestion, and then again, look at, like Dick, if you looked at the size of an iridologist, what would you look at first thing? Well, I always start uh, with the pupil and work out. I do too. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And, uh, so the pupil tonus uh, indicates some emotional things, which I may or may not comment on depending upon the individual. And next thing I would look at is the, the toxic radials, the way they're affecting the stomach, then the colorette, uh, the, the irregularity, the, the discoloration of the stomach is the next thing I'd look at. Yeah, and see then, the Halloween and Holly that he's talking about in the stomach area. And yes. uh, yeah, and the pupil's irregular shape as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that person is very overwrought. Uh, at least what they were when that picture was taken. 
Yeah. And then the, the colon, the, the term that Dr. Judson used was a spastic colon. Uh, and up in the, in the uh, well, I'm jumping up to large organ areas, um, you can see the, what he would call, we call now the cuna, that they're degenerative in color, and we don't use that term anymore, but it's certainly uh, more of concern than areas that are, don't have black in them. And the, uh, one of the things that Dr. Jensen taught was that you never saw blue in, in a brown eye. So if you saw any blue at all, uh, you had a really toxic individual. And I've seen eyes that were almost black. Now, um, one, of, one of my uh, best managers, uh, her eye is sky blue now. Uh, the, the, the lung uh, area would really concern me with this person. And right. Well, the, that's what, what I'm called arcosinolis uh, circulation. It's a major issue, and, and you know this really uh, amuses me because uh, if and when we look at my eye today, uh, I would say that person uh, would be approaching senility in terms of that lipid. <laughs> I guess we call it <laughs> lipid right now. Well, but, um, that has not happened. And uh, not necessarily, case, Dick. That is. That's why we look at these signs and we say, are they genetic? Or are you actually manifesting them in your body? Now, I did want to point out before we leave this picture, because we're going to look at dick size. Um, and I want to spend a little time on those. And I've got a limited time because I have a class at, well, what will be seven here. But um, I wanted to tell you, when you see this, this red line, it comes out, even though it doesn't point, Notice that another little small line goes out here, and it stops, and it pools right at the area of the lung bronchioles, like Dick was mentioning, those bright lights. So always look to the adjacent area and see if anything is standing out to you. Okay, just see if there's anything there that looks like it needs to be addressed. And, of course, you know, when you see all of these little lines coming in, then this person does have a lot of immediate stressors in a lot of areas in their body, the lymph, the lungs, the skin. And, you know, they may be older. They may have been having some tissue breakdown, various things like that. Boy, that fork in the uh, lower right quadrant of the sclera is impressive, the, the one that you're pointing at with the arrow, the black yeah. arrow. Yeah, that's quite a major combination of things, I think. Um, maybe somewhat of an infection pocket, um, but um, definitely. And it's increasing in size and thickness also. Yeah, and that's something to be aware of, too. Okay, so a bordered meander. Um, Jack Chips calls this a snake in the hose. You see the meandering line, and yet it's got a border around it. So it looks like a snake in the hose. And so this person could have, could have, again, some arterial sclerosis. And also, if you see anything in the liver of the iris or the sclera, it could be a potential for um, some areas that have become twisted in the esophagus or even in the digestive tract because it's like more congestion than in just a regular meandering line. See this? Can you see that there's like a straight line next to it and there's a straight line on this side? And then over here, we kind of have something very similar. There's a straight line and then another straight line. More on this one, you can see it. So that's called the bordered meander. And we want to look and see where there's the blockage. So then we go look at the iris and see if there's something that shows up in the iris that would correlate with this. Where is their congestion? Is it in the liver? Is it in the digestion? Is it in the brain? Obviously, in this case, these are in the brain area. They're up at the top of the eye, coming down. 
And then we've also got just some regular simple stress lines that are coming down. But that's a bordered meander. And here's one. You see the straight line, like boxing it off. And then there's that fermentation sign that we talked about. But that's mm. congestion again. Now and It could be uh, um, heavy metals as well. It could be. And that is the secondary thing. Like I said, they often come together, you know, when you see the heavy, the, the fermentation sign. But IPA doesn't use heavy metals. So I'm trying to kind of keep it to, you know, what people are uh, discussing and what might be on the test. But definitely fungus and yeast and cancer love metal. And so if a person has one of those signs, whether it is fermentation or whether it's metal, usually I see the metal as being a little more gray and a little less fuzzy. You know, gray like... Do, uh, our dodger, Betty Sue, do you cross-check uh, with the uh, iris? Oh, uh, the, the, always. The, uh, you do the iridology. So you'd look at the tires patches possibly for a, a gravel or for heavy metals, radiation? Yes. Yes, that's a good possibility. And, you know, in the basic course, we uh, don't necessarily talk about every detail in the iris. We look at the maps, you know, we talk about what's in the map. And this is why we need an anatomy and physiology class, really, to understand what those things are. So, what, Dick, what part of the body does the pyrus patches regulate? Where is it? Yeah, what it yeah, what is it? I'm not sure what you're asking me. Well, uh, Holly doesn't know anatomy, so I was asking you when you see something in the pyre's patches, what do you think? What where do I find it? No, what do you think it means when you see it? Holly well, was just saying she didn't to know me anatomy. It, to me it's an area and I looked there for either uh, radiation which is supposed to look like kind of a gravel in that area on the iridology chart, uh, and also possibly, uh, in, the, in the cases you mentioned here, have heavy metals, which would have the same appearance. I'm not sure where I read that. It's just something I've been I'm taught. not either. I haven't actually heard that. I mean, I think of the Pyrus patches as like um, lymphatic uh, nodules, you know, where the lymph masses of like lymphatic tissues, and they're found uh, in the small intestines. And but you're right; it would make sense that if you had nodules there, that it might be because you had a low immune system, and you know it was direly affected by radiation. You know that would make sense to consider that as a. Did see one case where a man had been in Japan uh, shortly after in Hiroshima, and he was loaded with radiation, and I did see it there in his case. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good to know. I did not know that myself, actually. I never put those two together. So um, spirals, again, notice that most of these signs that the most IPA will really say is that they are problems with arterial circulation. Now, this can be a sign, again, of a change in blood flow, congestion, weakening vessels, but blood flow to where? So we look at the spiral, which is not the same as a capsule at the end of a line, but we look at the spiral and look at what is adjacent to it. Oh, well, let's see, the spleen's over here, so um, maybe this congestion is in the spleen. And so they might need to work on the immune system again. So those are spirals, and let's look at some of these. You see how they look? They just kind of do a loop-de-loop. -loop. And yeah. notice how close this line actually gets to the uh, lung heart area of the iris as well. Dick, were you going to say something? No, I'm just fascinated. 
It's fun, isn't it? And here's another meandering line that starts to get kind of twisted up and make some loop-de-loops. This is a terrible iris picture, but it was a, a good, good uh, sclera picture. Do you ever use the term uh, transversals in sclerology? Vessels? If you saw that in the eye, in other words, you'd really be concerned. What, is, what was the, the term? The eye. The transversals. Tra oh, yeah, we do. Definitely. We have transversals for sure, and that's widely used. Okay, now isn't sometimes... That, isn't that what you just showed us? No. A transversal right. is in the iris. Yes, I, I was asking, do you use the term uh, when that occurs in the spiral? Oh, Spar yeah, right there. Well, we we call them tangential vessels. Okay. It's a different term. They, when they start to run along the iris itself, but um, when we use the term um, transversals. We're talking about iris fibers in the iris that have basically right. broken off and fallen down. But in the sclera, right. we, don't, we don't really use that in, most sclerologists don't really use that term. So in but, the, could you go to the previous slide for a moment? Uh-huh. And you see in the lower right where the arrow is, uh, you, you can see to the right where they intersect with one another, which if it were nerve fibers in the iris, as you say, we'd call that a transversal. So the fact that that goes through an, another line does not have any meaning. Um, not usually in this case. I would say anecdotally somebody would say, wow, there's a lot going on right here at this point, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So I would always look at that point anyway. So that's a good point. Yeah, I wish I had a better picture. I've got to work on getting a better picture of that. And um, so, you know, here we have a very heavy line, which could indicate uh, a, a arterial blockage. Um, it's a meandering vessel, but it's coming right down to the, to the brain area. And then it also has another lighter, but when it makes these angles, one of the things that's being studied now is that sometimes these right angles might be associated with cancer. Dr. Tony Jimenez has been studying that in his cancer clinic in Mexico. And uh, they don't necessarily look just like this one, but it's in the studying uh, realm. We don't really know for sure. But he did find some of these right angles in people that had breast and prostate cancer, and a lot of them. Do I see that those, the three points there, um, I forgot the name that you gave it, where you said they're an indicator of uh, heavy metals uh, and mold, did you say? Uh, uh, fermentation. Yeah, fermentation. Fermentation, yeah. I see one. At 9 o'clock at the end of the little curl, I see Over another here. one, the one that goes straight down, and then I see the other one that's uh, the uh, arrow on the left is almost pointing at it. So yeah, if it were me, Dick, if it were uh, me, I would look at... Uh, no. Yeah, right there, yeah. Yeah, I would look at this one. I would say there's a p possibility of heavy metals here. We need to get tested. This one, yeah. I would say, is more blue, and I would look more to fermentation in the gut or in the sinuses. And what about the one in, in between those two? Now, you're talking about this one right here? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it's more blue. The difference is when you see gray in the iris, and again, this is not IPA, but we think of metals that have left a mm -hmm. deposit. And the fermentation okay. signs, it's more blue rather than gray. Boy, that's pretty subtle. Yeah, it is. Okay, I'm going to have to move on because I've got, Dick, we're going to go ahead and get to your eyes. We've got a few other examples. 
Um, but this is a, and I'm going to put this on the website, but this is a description of fermentation. It's metabolism of sugars. You'll see these little lines. They're at the end of a dot. They're not just free floating out in the sclera. They're at the end of a line, rather, a dot at the end of a line. And you'll notice here it says it looks bluish or grayish dots, which are organized into a circular pattern at the end of a line. Sometimes they can appear as a loose patch. It shows the body's ability to metabolize sugar. So um, the sugars aren't getting used up in the body, and they can ferment feeding yeast and fungus. So people that have these signs all up in the head area might feel lightheaded or feel like they have hypoglycemia, tiredness, and maybe even have liver and pancreas problems because the liver and the pancreas are involved in that process. And uh, so, you know, when you see these signs, you definitely want to do a yeast and fungal detox and, um, and keep working at it. So that, you know, it's, it's going to be a, a problem that will come and go, but it will always come back. And so the tool that we would use to, to help that go is to use a good herbal formula like yeast and fungal detox and partiarco and partiarco tea and um, grape seed extract, and then also support the body by not plying it with a lot of sugar. Okay, now here's that other eye, um, the chart of the other eye. And you can see when you see all those sclera signs coming down here, you know, just like within the iris, if you see signs up here, they're going to be in the, the head and brain area primarily but they might also show up in the pituitary pineal or the sinus, for example. Okay, now I'm going to close this for now, and we're going to take a quick look at Dick's eyes. And I'm going to, like I said, send these to everybody. But um, So Dick, I'm going to get this one first because I think it is probably a little bit better. Um, Eddie, did you say you're going to send um, his eyes to us? Yes, I am. Okay, good. We'll do okay. that later tonight. Okay. Um, so, um, Dick, do you want to tell would us you anything like me to about resend your you that, that is, Sue, Would you like me to resend that left eye to you, or is that the way you want it? No, it, it would be better, I think. I have, the, I have it better. I tried to um, uh, enhance it so that we could see the collarette better and the lacuna better. Yeah. And um well, you did. Yeah, but what I can do is I can actually go to the file here that you sent me and just open them up that way. Uh oh, where'd it go? Iris photos. Let's see. Let's see. Uh oh, no photo there. Oh, okay. I had my son take these photos. Where did it go? Huh. Well, I have them say, oh, wait, view messages. Let's see. Nope. All right, Dick. Let me just get them over there. I forgot the what I said about the funeral home. What? I said I forgot what I wrote there about the funeral home. I was my sense of humor at the time. I gotcha. Why don't you be telling Holly um, anything about your health that would be pertinent to the pictures? Well, she's I, new I at the picture. Now. Oh, okay. She's new. Uh, at, she's new at iridology. Just the last couple of months. Well, the the, uh, the first thing I I would really be concerned about was starting at the pupil. The the pupil is, is formed well. Um, I I really don't. I have to look clearly at the stomach, and I see that there's some. I guess we call them radio furrows. Now we used to call them toxic. Okay, radios. wait. I'm not an analysis. Does this oh. picture reflect your health? Oh, well, 
the thing, uh, if you don't want an analysis, if you want me to just describe myself? Uh, I want you to myself? tell me, how does this picture reflect your health, what you've been through or what your heredity is? is how does our radiology reflect what's really gone on in your life? You know, it, it's really puzzling to me okay. um, because in the main, I, I feel like myself, my health has been good, although I've been uh, in the hospital a couple of times. And, um, I'm looking at that Arcus Sinellis, or what Dr. Jensen called Arcus Sinellis. I was diagnosed uh, with a TIA which I don't think was correct, but at the time I had brain fog so badly that I, I couldn't drive. I was supposed to speak, be speaking in Russia. Joy had to go in my place. And I, I couldn't even drive to get food while she was away. I had to have people bring it in. But I also had 43 tick bites, and I'd gone for about 8 or 10 hours in the sun without drinking any water. What All is TI? Uh, mini stroke. But uh, since then, uh, I think my perspicacity has actually increased. And I'm looking at that, and, and I see uh, diminished oxygen to the brain. And normally, uh, I'd be really concerned about that person. But I'm not experiencing a diminished. As a matter of fact, uh, if anything, uh, maybe it's because I take mind nights. I don't know. I, I'm far more able to work on technical things such, such as uh, social networking on the internet and and our zoology for that matter. Do can I, so, I mean, can I say that since you have been taking Mind Max and I don't know what else, I think you are much sharper than you used to be years ago. That's what I said. Yeah, yeah I believe much. that's true. Now, Dick, the reason I ask you that is that this is a real lesson in iridology. The general belief is that the iris is primarily your heredity, not what you've done in your life. You have really, in the last 30 years, taken good care of yourself. Now, I'll have to admit, when we get together, you might drink a little too much. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, Actually, I'm very careful about that. And it's uh, much more so than in the past uh, for spiritual reasons. Oh, that's There's just certain things as I grow spiritually, I, I, I have to let go of, and I'm glad to let go of. Like, like smoking, like uh, too much drinking. I, I have one beer, that's it. Yeah, that's wonderful, perfect. But anyway, so I guess what it leads us to say is, is that if your parents or your grandparents had this, sclera sign, but you have taken really good care of yourself, I mean this um, uh, corneal arcus, but you have taken extra good care of yourself, you have exercised, you have continued to work and to travel, and how old are you now, Dick? Well, I'm only 85, what do you expect? Only 85, there you go, and so perhaps this layer that we're seeing on your iris. In fact, Dr. Jensen used to say, in older people, it's kind of a normal part of the cornea aging. And so this maybe not be a problem at all for you. Now, but when we see it, then we have to ask the person, do you use too much salt, for example? Are you salting out? Do you have a yeah. high cholesterol, do you have high bad cholesterol? You know, ask the questions. Well, according to my blood work, uh, I do not. And uh, I got a bet when I was about 35 or 40, I got a special message, just a word I knew was, was from above, no more salt. And but I do use uh, a little bit of sea salt. Uh, on, I, I have uh, three soft boiled eggs for breakfast. Uh, and put a little sea salt on that, and that's it. Okay. Now let me ask you this. Inside your uh, collarette in the stomach and nutritive zone, it's a little hard to tell with as much going on out here in the corneal arcus. 
But inside yeah, here, we do have a pigment and a lacuna right over here case? at um, 10 o'clock. Yeah, I see it. Uh -huh. And uh, can you relate to that at all? And uh, no, that would govern what I, I, I was thinking that would be an indicator for the brain, even though it's inside the autonomic nerve roots. I think it's more liver because it's dark brown. I would say liver, uh, definitely where you're pointing at, but I thought you were going to the one on the right. No, I was talking about yeah. this yeah. I, I work on the liver, and I don't, uh, I, I take a liquid herbs for the liver, but I don't muscle test for anything additional on the liver. And that that surprises me. Okay. And the, the uh, degenerative lacuna over in the right, I guess we don't use that term, uh, right there uh, means I need to do a little more cleansing, but I'm pleased about the uh, cleanliness in general in the stomach and the colon area. Yes, yes, yeah, very clear. Um, you do have some crypts in the descending bowel, these little black lacunas that are along here. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, I'm taking extra psyllium now and liquid chlorophyll to deal with that. Okay, and those are usually a genetic sign too. So see, you're doing things to help take care of that genetic sign. So, Holly, I think this is a really good lesson in seeing that whatever signs people have in their eyes, if they start taking care of themselves at a younger age, then they're not going to manifest all of the problems that could be in store. And Dick is a great example of that. Like everybody, he's not without having had a, a, a cold or a flu or a virus or a this or a that. But the recovery and the body's ability to take care of itself is enhanced by good eating and exercise and a spiritual practice and a healthy lifestyle. Now, one, one of the things that I've noticed through the years, if I'm talking to an 85-year-old, uh, of course, most 85-year olds are parallel to the ground. Huh? The, the oldest living uh, society is a Japanese female who lives to be 83, and I'm 85, and usually their voice qu quivers, and they're not, um, um, <laughs> I, oh, I, I'll just say it, they're, they're not as articulate uh, as I seem to be. and. So when people, when I talk to people that I don't know and they find out my age, they're generally surprised, which is uh, pleasing to me. Well, Dick, I wanted to point out, and it's pleasing to me too, and it's true, but if you'll notice in your uh, iris itself that you really do have very close iris fibers, much like Holly does. You have a brown eye, but you have very close iris fibers, so you have good structural integrity that you were given, God-given, to have a strong body. And you have, even until now, you have exercised and you have kept your body up. And then we're whole people, so you've also worked on your body, mind, and spirit all together. And I just think it reflects that you've got a strong beginning, that probably your weakness is in the digestion bowel area because of these crypts that you have inherited. And you also have these radial furrows that are going out from the bowel. So, you know, those seem to be areas that would genetically possibly be of concern. Mm -hmm. So I don't know about your parents or your siblings, but I, I, you know, as you we were speaking, I remember when I was a teenager, my mother stressed the fact that she had been very, very careful uh, during her pregnancy with me to eat properly. And I remember at the time it just confused me. I couldn't see what eating had to do with health at all, uh, which meant I could have been a good physician, I guess. That's a little humor there. But now I see it very clearly, and she, so she was aware, but obviously. Now, Dick, do I you remember, 
Dr. Lorraine Day's, Dr. Lorraine Day's commentary about her oncologist that there was no connection between diet and disease. Oh, and yeah. It's not apparent to everybody. I remember that, too. One more thing I want to say before I have to go, because I've got like four minutes tonight. But we are recording this, and I will put it on the website. But has your sclera, has your um, uh, collarette, has it always had these flat square areas? Or do you remember it ever being completely round? No, I don't. Uh, periodically, uh, I've taken photos of my eyes, and I, I don't recall that. Well, this squaring of the collarette can be related to the pancreas. And, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and we saw, you know, the, uh, the color of your eyes is fairly consistent. But if there is a little uh, more orangey coloration in here, yeah. all right, in here, then you might want to do a little more nurturing of the pancreas as well. Because it's found in, 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 you know, the corners, and so it tends to make things get square. But you have a very healthy... I know my uh, my oh. blood work shows that uh, the blood sugar levels are good. But uh, how would I do that aside from detox, which well, I do every day? Well, you know, you can get your pancreatic enzymes checked, but I'm sure you take oh. enzymes when you eat, don't you? Um... Do I take pancreatic enzymes? Yeah, or any or, enzymes, food enzymes. Oh, yes, I do take food enzymes uh, yeah. with every meal. Yeah, so that's it's good. before every meal. Yeah, and you've recently been sick, so, um, you know, I would say... Yeah, I attribute that to fatigue. Uh, if I don't get my sleep, my immune system seems to go down, go south quickly, and that uh, trip to really uh, very enervating for a number of reasons. Okay. Well, y'all, it kind of feels like I'm losing my connection and I'm going to be a little bit late for this class, so I'm going to have to take off. But, um, you know, did this yellow up here, you know, could be kidney or liver too. See that in the sclera? So I just thought I'd throw that in at the last minute. I would say that you Thank have you. very strong eyes and that if you're watching your salt and you're taking a formula for the brain that, you know, uh, you're probably going to live to be 105 at least. So there you go. Um, Holly, I'm going to send these pictures to you, okay? And, uh, okay, you, great. Yeah, keep sending me things and we'll keep talking about them, okay? And Dick, you do the same. Um, like I said, I'll send you all the rest of these pictures and also the form that you fill out while you're looking at them. Although right now okay. a lot of the terms might be foreign, you're going to know a lot of the terms too. So will we be talking or, or will you be doing any classes between now and the time you return? Yes, next Wednesday. Okay. Well, I'll be sure to get in touch after the 15th. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Betty. Have a good time. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night.